So all of these, though, even, con in even conventional Buddhism, uh, gets into what's called transpersonal identity, awakening the Buddha states within. We all have these levels of consciousness within ourselves. They already exist and are aware, but when, we're, when our fields are not activated, when our, our KT membranes are not um, activated, there's not an open flow between our physical bodies and our consciously embodied self and those other levels of our identity. So as we work with um, activating the KT membrane, it will progressively bring those other layers of ourselves into full awareness. And it takes, t it takes time, it doesn't just go bang, you know, now I can breathe and I'm like all, I'm here all now one and I know everything. No, it doesn't work that way. But there are levels, we can go through many, many lifetimes and some of us have of doing the, the slow way of you know, working through various religions or filling in the blanks. Sometimes you finish the conventional Buddhism thing and then you went, say, into Christianity or into Islam or into um, the Hebrew teachings or whatever, or, or just filling in the frequencies that each of those teachings were originally meant to bring to us. And each of those frequencies would begin the process of activating our Kiti memory. All right, so now we're just going right into activating the key team membrane because it needs to be done because there are certain things that have to happen by 2012 or it's not going to go well on this planet. So we have the Dankini Bliss. This is a very interesting state because I think I crested it like a week or two before the workshop and the first thing I felt was this, this most horrendous feeling like I died, but like died in misery. I felt like every misery of every molecule on the entire planet like the suffering of every thing that, that is anywhere on this planet and maybe even in the galaxy as if it just poured through me. And as like, beloved, I'm falling apart. And he said, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I said, nothing's wrong with you. You're having a Tarakiti awakening. What is that? Never mind, we'll tell you later. <laughs> so the first feeling was just this, as if you inhaled all of the grief and all of the suffering from the entire cosmos, or at least your local universe, and, but all through time. Where just, and, and it's like, how do you ever make that go away? Because there's like such a cognition of the pain of every other being. There was no separation between you and the other beings. But be they fallen or risen, it didn't matter. It was a state of absolute love but absolute misery at the same time. Because of that love, you could feel the entirety of the pain. I said, beloved, if this is enlightenment, I think I'll take darkness, thanks. <laughs> right? And they said, don't worry, it's just, a, it's just a membrane you have to pass through. I said, okay. Right? And about a week, I was all right, actually. It's like, okay, I don't feel like I'm coming unraveled anymore. Because it was just so painful. It was physically painful. Where I, I felt nauseous, I felt dizzy. I, it was worse than any depression you could imagine. And I'm saying, you know, blood is really, do I, should I just go in and get depression treatment? What is wrong with it? I said, no, don't get depression treatment. You don't need that. You're moving through this stage, this activation, you'll understand more. So they're helping me to understand what I went through. So if you go through any bit of that, it's actually when a, a bliss level, I said, this is bliss, because they said it's a level of bliss. I said, this is bliss? Oh, please. Right? And they said, no, you get to the bliss, right? This is the feeling that sometimes happens, not always, but you usually will get some version of this, of when your Kiti membrane is activating and you start to literally take in the frequencies of the other selves, your own other selves, of the planet and the whole bit, and you're also uh, taking in the, um, now you would be going through the level I did if we hadn't had the uh, Dana Kohare healing waves come in, so hopefully you won't have to. They didn't have those available yet when I was moving through that. And that's why I thought I was going to lose it. I really did. It was just, it was just so painful and so agony-filled. This probably won't go this way for you. You might get a bit of it, like in like little just, you might find times where it might not even be a karmic memory that comes up. All of a sudden you just need to cry, right? You just feel so awful, you just need to cry. Why am I crying? I have no idea, right? <laughs> so you just let it come out and process, realize it will. But because you had the healing wave activations that I didn't have the opportunity to have because they couldn't run them in the grids yet, it shouldn't be that bad. But you might get a little touch of it where you can understand what I was talking about. And it's really, it's moving through that disharmonic part of it. That's where you feel the, the agony and the pain and the separation and the, you know, the absolute misery. But then once you clear that, there is this literally a bliss state, a state of, wow. And you just feel a part of everybody and everything everywhere. And it's the beginning of feeling the full at one minute with source and being able to hold a portion of that consciousness in your body. So, and I, I wish I'd had this when I was going through that. It might have made it a little easier. But I knew they were there, so. <laughs>
<laughs> I said, are you sure I can't go and like, you know, just get antidepressant medication or something? <laughs> they said, no, that's not going to help you right now. Sometimes that helps, but in this condition, that's not, right, for that, what I was going through there. So the Dankini Bliss, I believe, was the one that I was moving through. And and it's still, it's funny, it's like I feel like I, I went through part of it and I touched the, the bliss part on the other side, but... I keep like moving back down in this state of consciousness where I go, oh, that was up there, right? Where it's not like, ah, oh, I'm the bliss state, you know, because eventually to become Buddha and you are the bliss state, you know, and I can move into that, but it's still a movement, so it means my body hasn't fully anchored it yet. So anyway, the next state, this is where it's after the Nankini bliss. That's what ideally you would get to through conventional you know, monastic Buddhism. You don't have to go through years of that in order to get there when you work the other systems. Because again, we're working several of the layers at once that will trigger those into activation as well. Now the esoteric Buddhism, the Vajra world stuff, that's the tantric Buddhism, that in some of the traditional schools won't acknowledge it, and that's where distortions come in, because they're all supposed to be part of the same set of teachings, but there was all sorts of fights between different factions within the, the Buddhist movement over the centuries. So some took it one way, some took it the other, some, you know, they just broke them all up, and now they kind of just, some of them go in different directions. Some of them actually teach you how to fall, some of them have to teach you how, yeah, so Buddhism isn't pure either in its form. Everything has been a bit tainted by the twists of teachings here, Christianity through Buddhism through everything. What it's supposed to teach you was you'd go from those two and you go into the tantric uh, Vajra, 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 I can't even pronounce that, Vajrayana teachings, and that would begin taking you into understanding some of the things we've been working with, with anatomy and structure and cosmos and all that. Now, you get to the next level. Once the, the esoteric teachings are meant to teach you and take you into activations of the, the Dankini, or the person, or dan, so Dankiti, the personal levels of the Kiti uh, membranes, the Dankartha Dan Bliss, sorry, Dankartha Bliss, which would be Buddha level two, then keep going, and there's nothing past this, past this the Dankartha Bliss, no teachings on planet right now. There had been before, but there, are, there aren't any more left in the Atlantean period and stuff. There are teachings of that, some of the teachings of this level, and a little bit of this one before. But this is the undisclosed Christ Buddha doctrines. These most of them haven't even been on planet in seating three at all. Some of them were in seating two, some of them were in seating one for periods, but not all of them. And again, there were like sections of them, but a lot of the things that have never been on planet here before that the beloveds have been bringing in were actually part of those texts that only the, the more outer parts were actually ever put into print or spoken words out here. <coughs> so, sorry. So you go from the Dankini bliss of Buddha level one, density one, to the Dankartha bliss, of density two, the Dan Ra Raja, Raja bliss of density three, the Dan Kumi bliss of density four, the Dan Rishi bliss of density five, and the Dani Luma bliss of uh, what you could call it density six, but it's actually a Dashi one cycle. That's where the, you have the full Christ star ascension into the Dashi one cycle. Now, they describe it this way. So the bliss state occurs when the existing conscious identity level, whatever level that is, is that you're on, transmutes its Dana Kohare karmic template and activates the corresponding density level of the personal Kiti membrane. Uh, the Don Kiti, the personal one is the Don Kiti, allowing for freedom from the corresponding density time cycle via merger of the corresponding 12 probabilities into the central bud Buddhist state actuality dominion. Embodying a bliss state is characterized by release of the corresponding level of ego personality finite identity as it expands to encompass a state of at one -ment and attunement with all that is within that density level. The I am this all. Right? So it's not about stomping out your ego. It's not about getting rid of your personality. And a lot of the Buddhist stuff that I've been looking through, it frames it as like, kind of like releasing it, getting rid of it. You know, like, like it's, it's bad, it's lower. That's not the way it was meant. You're actually growing it into expansion. And you do lose finite identification with your one self because you become more and more aware of the wholeness of what that self is. So you'll know yourself as what you call yourself now, but you'll also know yourself as more than that. So that's one of the twists that I found just looking through some of the Buddhist stuff. It's like you're supposed to you know, surrender everything, all your possessions, your whole identity, and basically become nothing. And that's not exactly what was meant 
by these teachings. That's one interpretation. The beloveds interpret it you know, in this way. It's becoming more and more where you don't get overly identified with your single body or your single identity or your single lifetime as you become more and more of an eternal being that knows yourself simultaneously in all the nows and eventually beyond all the nows as well. So anyway, we have these levels of the bliss and let's see, so we're expanding into a state of at one and attunement with all that is within whatever density level. Now, it constitutes a release of polarity separation and return to unity for that level. So these are all releasing of polarity levels and expanding into the next level. And that's done by the uh, Kiti membrane activations for each level. Okay, it can feel like mini death. Yes, <laughs> that's the one I was experiencing. Of the small finite self, the personality, the ego, and a rebirth of the God self level of consciousness. So the mini death isn't a bad thing, but it may kick up fears and those kind of things. Literally in the body imprint itself, the consciousness of you that makes up your atoms may feel those same transitions that you might go through if you're if you were separating from your body. So there there is like I found there was a fear level. There was like almost terror at first, and, but we were also doing this other purgings and clearings like in the last you know several months. I was like, well, is it that or that? I don't know. But there was a just like the body feels a fear about about this, about this release, about letting go, because it almost feels like it's going to be annihilated. Like the body seems to hold that fear, and that's part of the karmic pattern. That is not a, a natural response to this, but it is something we tend to go through as we're clearing the, the Dana Kohare um, distorted layer. Now we should have an easier time with this because of the healing waves that have, you know, that we have anchored. And I do believe the techniques they're going to be giving us, um, you know, that they, they said that they can't even start transmitting on them for at least a week. They're going to start on Halloween or the day after Halloween. They said they will start them. I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> they're going to give us the, these, you know, the other techniques. They will begin the process of or how to work with this personally. So if you do get some of those feelings coming through, it will give you ways to move with that energy and to expand into those bliss states. Okay, so let's see. Can it be so polarity? Can it be like mini death? Can it be expanded? Let me see, I'm just reading my right here. Dan Kiti awakening can be expedited. Ah, the Dan, the Dan Kiti awakening can be expedited by Kiti template activations, which is what we are doing, you know, consciously, beginning to consciously participate in, for the three layers of the Kiti membrane. Remember, there are three layers of it. You have the Dara layer, that's the 17410 sets. Then you have the Mura layer, which is the 28511 sets. And then you have the Itura layer, which is the 12639 sets. And that would give you the, the 1 through 12 of uh, the three layers of the one Kiti template field. Now, that's, we can look at these. You'll, you'll have a copy of this. I think we're just going, when there's not even like facilities to, to run these off in mass, so you will get the cleaned up copies of these when the package is sent out. But I'll, I'll read this quickly. The Donkini Bliss, what it, of course, what it corresponds to is if 12 probable selves merge to become one fully embodied incarnate, right? So like that would be 12 probable selves of you that have the same body form from the same fetal imprint. Um, they'd be free from the uh, karmic wheels for density one. Okay, 12 faces of potentiality or probability selves equals one incarnate identity. So that goes with the density one level. The density two level is 12 incarnate selves, which is 144 probable selves, right, merge to become one fully embodied soul, free from the wheels of karma and density two. So you're freeing your soul from the karmic templates. Uh, 12 faces of the incarnate equal one soul identity. So you become that. Next level is the 12, 12 souls, 144 incarnates, 1,728 probable selves, merge to become one fully embodied oversoul, free from the wheels of karma and density three. 12 faces of the soul equal one oversoul identity. The next one, the Dan Kumi bliss, is when you have 12 oversouls, which are 144 souls, 1,728 incarnates, and 20,736 probable selves merge to become one avatar embodied, free from wheels of karma and density four. The 12 faces of the oversoul equal one avatar identity. Then we have the Danrishi bliss, 12 avatars, 144 oversouls, 1,728 souls, 20,736 incarnates, and 248,832 probable selves merged to become one fully embodied Rishi Mashaya, 
free from the karmic wheels of density five, right? Twelve faces of the avatar equal one Rishi Mashaya identity. Then the final one we have the Dani Luma Bliss. This is twelve Rishi Mashaya, 144 avatars, 728 oversouls, 20,736 souls, 248,832 incarnates, and 2,985,984 probable selves merged to become one fully embodied. Dani Adashi Adept. That is a Dani, all right, a fully embodied Dani, D H A N I, right? Completion of personal Dan -ki -dan Kiti Christ our ascension to Adashi one time cycles. And you're going, hmm, there's three Adashi time cycles. That got us to Adashi one. <laughs> oh, God. Aww.